Just as the moon disperses the darkness of the night by its light, giving confidence and safety to nighttime travelers, the light of the teachings of the Lord Buddha offer safety to all those who must navigate the cycle of existence towards perfection in life. On the full moon day of each month, Buddhists throughout the world reflect upon the great compassion of the Lord's Buddha in discovering and teaching Tamma for the benefit of all beings. However, about 500 years after the final passing away of the Lord's Buddha, although the theoretical teachings of the Lord's Buddha were compiled and preserved in the Buddhist scriptures, but the practical teachings which allowed others to become enlightened in his footsteps disappeared from the world. It was only 2,000 years later that a great monk was to sacrifice his life for Buddhism in order to rediscover this missing core of the practical teachings once known to the Lord Buddha. It was on the full moon day of the September 1914 that a Buddhist monk named Pratmungkon Thet Munni Sotjantasaro made the determined vow to meditate to the death if he could not rediscover some small part of the original teachings the Lord's Buddha brought to the world. Whatever, Whatever happens, happens if, if I, I cannot attain even, even a small part of the truth which, which the Lord Buddha Lord knew, I will I sit to, to death. death. If, if I die, die my, my actions will be a model of goodness for monks and Buddhists of, of later generations. generations. This, this will be my virtue, virtue if, if I, I should die. die. It was only after striving with the utmost resolve to the degree he was prepared to lay down his life that he was able to attain the Tamagaya, a rediscovery of unrivaled significance for all in quest of enlightenment through meditation, and notable in that his discovery was a precedent never before touched upon by his contemporary masters of meditation or in manuals of practice, a path of practice revealed by cultivating the minds along the middle way, the path to an end of all sufferings. Prat Mung Kwon Muni was born Sot Mek Noi on the 10th of October, 1885, in Song Pinong, Supanburi, Thailand. His family home overlooked the village temple from the opposite bank of the river. His father was called Ngun Me Gao Noi and his mother Sut Jai. He was the second born of five children. His family was in the rice trading business and they shipped rice by barge in Song Pinong and the adjoining districts. He showed intellect, determination and steadfastness of character from an early age, never resting from any task he had set his mind to until achieving success. He helped his parents from an early age. It was only at the age of nine that he had the chance to commence his formal education when his uncle became a monk at Song Pinong Temple. Later, he continued his studies at Wat Bangla Banglain Nakhon Patom until being fully versed in Thai and Kong languages.
Only then did he return to help his parents with the family business. In his teenage years, the family relied upon him for most of their business affairs and trading voyages to the neighboring towns. At the age of 14, his father passed away, leaving him in charge of business and family alike. He was able to keep all the work well in hand, despite his tender years, and was well accepted by his crews because of his sincerity, wisdom, and compassion. Business prospered year by year until his family gained a reputation for its financial standings. One day, returning upstream to Song Pinong, the barge empty, but carrying the cash from the rice sale, he encountered dangerous rapids near Nakhon Chai Si. To avoid difficulty in making headway, he took a shortcut through a narrow, pirate-infested creek called Bang Itan. Usually barges would only risk that route in convoys, but that day he found himself alone. Sensing foreboding, he had his crew man the helm, knowing all too well that pirates would attack the helmsman's first, thinking him to be the owner. He availed himself of an eight-shot rifle and hid in the bow. However, on further consideration, he felt ashamed of himself, letting others risk their lives in his place, thinking compassionately of his crew. All the crew gets from me for looking after this wretch barge is 10 or 11 baht a month. Why should I let them be the first to die when I'm the one who owns it? If disaster strikes, they should look after their own skins because they have wives and children dependent on them for the rice in their bellies. That day he was to escape danger, unscathed, but the crisis brought home to him the fertility of the household life. He vowed to himself that he would renounce the world life and become a monk as soon as he could guarantee the security of his family for the rest of their lives in his absence. At the time he made his vows, he was barely 19. However, he didn't take his own ambitions lightly. He took three years to amass sufficient wealth to support his family, only then entering the monastery for lifelong ordination. Lung Pa Wat Bak Nam took ordination at Song Pi Nong Temple and was given the monastic name of Jantasaro Piku. He remained only one rainy season at that temple before traveling to Bangkok to further his studies at Wat Chetupon in both scriptural and meditational subjects. He was outstandingly conscientious in his study of the scriptures from renowned teachers, traveling regularly to Wat Arun on the opposite banks of the Chaupaya River, Wat Mahatat, Wat Sutat and Watsa Bloom in search of knowledge. He even sought extra scriptural knowledge by spending time in temples such as Wat Mahatat, Supanburi, and returned periodically to his home temple at Song Pinong. From the earliest days of his ordination onwards, Lung Pa Wat Bak Nam devoted the best part of his time to training himself in meditation. He meditated daily without exception and roamed from temple to temple in quest of knowledge concerning the proper way to meditate. In his eleventh year, as a monk, he found him.